I am excited today because I got my good friend, Michael Starr. Mike, say hello yes, to my audience. Hey, how's everybody doing? All right, man. It's been a long time, brother. Yeah, man. Yeah, so definitely. how many years we go back? Oh, shoot. At least. Uh, at least junior high school, right? Man, yeah. yeah at least junior high school. So we're talking about. 35? Yeah. 40? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lord Jesus. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that that's good though, man. We 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 we've grown up. Yes, sir. We, yes, sir. We experienced some things. Mm -hmm. uh, but today I'm here to talk about your career and some of the things you have done and what you're gotcha. accomplishing now. Gotcha. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? Well, I'm from Carson, California. Uh, went to school at uh, Abani High. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> we are pilots over here. So Hard anyway, to be a pilot. <laughs> that's yeah. right. That's right. So yeah, we. Uh, we uh, we're out of uh, Carson. Um, I've been been in music since I can remember. You know? Yeah. You know the thing was uh, in church. You know it was almost like a prerequisite. Right. You know? you, right. You, you there, so uh, you you gonna you gonna be in the choir. And yeah. I, from from day one, uh, I, I'm sure my parents just knew that I had I had a gift. You know, so uh -huh. they put me in front, and uh -huh. you know, I, I was I was in leadership. As long as I can remember, uh, lead vocalist for a little small four and five person uh, choir at Macedonia Baptist <laughs> Church. <laughs> yeah, so uh, from from then, man, I kind of spread my wings, and uh, my grandmother was instrumental in putting me in uh, in a um, in a position where I worked with a larger a larger church. Okay, uh, went over to uh, Ward African Methodist Episcopal Church. Yeah, up in L.A. and. Um, from being in the choir at Ward, uh, kind of put me in a position to um, uh, take on take on some leadership uh, roles with the SECYC, which is that large uh, conference choir right. for the uh, AME Church. Yeah, man, mm -hmm. that's that's cool. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Uh, so let me ask you this: um, your first major gig outside of church what was that oh what was the first gig um had to be well after being with SCYC, uh one of the one of the uh one of the main directors uh -huh. with SCYC was russell thomas hill okay and great musician out of out of uh, orange county at any rate his his stepson is Brent jones Okay. So once I hooked up with Brent Jones, the sky was the limit, man. We, oh, man. we did a little bit of this, a little bit of that. All right. Um, I think the first, the first major situation was, uh, was, uh, don't get God started. I'm pretty sure. Okay. So, 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 so the connection with you and Brent really kind of started this. Yes. All yeah. right. Started the professional, um, yeah. uh, the professional side of my, uh, my career. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, now I know you're also a recording artist too. We'll, yes. we'll talk about that a little later on. Uh, but do you dabble a little bit on, on keys and stuff like that? Man, you know? I messed up because and when I was a kid, they had uh, parents had me in uh, in piano. Yeah. And so it was piano, and then baseball, for for me. Okay. And um, I love I love music, but yeah. when it came to piano, it was something that I did because I was forced to do it. Um, I always wanted to sing. I didn't want to play, but if I knew if I knew what I know today, right, I would have stuck with it. And man, yeah. but God, God knows what to do. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Because exactly. I'm telling you, Dan, if if with the with the with the talent that He's given me vocally, and if I could go in and play any kind of keyboard, I'd be a monster. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe He knew what to do. Yeah, right? He knows what to do. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. check this out. Now I know you've done some work with different artists, mm -hmm. um, but before we go there, I, I want to ask you about this. There's a lot of music that's out nowadays, and mm -hmm. you know I know the times have changed the way different beats and we got the sequencer and mm -hmm. the way things are done, right. things are recorded differently. Absolutely. And I know we're trying to accomplish the same goal, which is get the music out there, mm -hmm. and hopefully people appreciate the hard work we put in. Mm -hmm. But you know, of course, Mike, we're, we're old school people, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, mm -hmm. we like that old. Whether it's gospel, the old James Cleveland, the Walter Hawkins. As a matter of fact, I was just vibing on them the other day. Okay. Edwin Hawkins and, you know, mm -hmm. Andre Christ. I was vibing on that old school music. And that stuff is like 30, 40 years old. Right, right. So that leads me to this question. What, in your opinion, makes a great 
hit. I hate to use the word hit as far as with gospel, but even the secular, you know, you list the Frankie Beverly Mays, I mean, Joy and Pain. Mm -hmm. My band plays that stuff. You right, know what I'm right, saying? Right. Exactly. Been so long. I mean, neither. Mm -hmm. What makes a great hit? Wow. That's a challenging question, though, because there are so many variables when it comes to what makes what makes the tune, man. Um, okay. Some of the some of the um, songs that that just stick stick in the back of my mind are songs that people really <laughs> don't even consider hits. Uh, yeah. uh, LTD did a song back in oh god, that had to be the late seventies, yeah. maybe early early eighties. Yeah. Um, it was on the same on the same album with Love Battered, I believe. Yeah. Okay. But the name of the tune was April Love. Mm. And they played it on uh, they played it on a couple of the channels, but it didn't it didn't get the kind of airplay. I thought that was a hit. Okay. In my mind, that was a hit because basically the song when the song speak when the, when the song speaks to you, right? When when a song when you can relate to a song, yeah. that's what makes a hit really relatability. And then I tell you another thing that really makes a song: if your audience or your listening audience can number one relate to it. Yeah. And can kind of sing it, you know. Anytime you go to a concert and a and a, and a band stands up and plays "Joy and Pain," for for example, <laughs> yeah. the crowd is already singing. Right. That, so that's a hit. Yeah. That's what you call a hit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as opposed to something that you grind, 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 yeah. put out, and it never really goes anywhere. Okay. But you go, um, it might, it might, it might sell a, a million copies. The album might, but that's not necessarily a hit, as it were. Okay. Yeah. So, so what is your process? Your writing process? Um, basically, Please. I'll take something that, for instance, uh, Terrence Thomas and I used to get get together and do things, and he'll give me a piece, and he'll go, "Man, I, I don't do lyrics. You know, you got to do the lyrics." Right. So I'll sit there, and he'll give me an idea as to what he might have wanted to do with it, and uh, man, I'll just I'll sit there and meditate on it, and I'll let it I'll let it. Uh, I let I let the song get me involved, right? And then I just go from go from the top of my head, man, and and do do feeling. Okay. Yeah. So so, do you write a title out first, and then you start writing the no, content, no, or sir. you kind of no, sir. Okay. I put I put the I put the basic song together, prior to even trying to put a name to it, because after you get your after you get the base of your song, once you get your hook. Nine mm -hmm. times out of ten, you'll come up with something. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know what? And and, and I, of course, you know, you know, I went to Long Beach City College, right? And and, uh, and music production and songwriting, that's the main thing they talked about. They talked about a hook. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, people, what is a hook? What is a hook? Basically, it just hooks you in. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, you know. Yeah. The, the Michael Jackson. Rock with you, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and that's the kind of thing. Oh, nine. That's it. That's just the that's constant it. thing. That's the thing but, that gets but the, the body. audience hooked. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's hence, hence yeah. the word. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, y'all. Excuse the helicopter. Then my son, he's practicing. We at the studio, and we're just kicking back in the backyard. We didn't go out to the regular recording place, so if you hear this on the podcast, don't worry about that. All right, but we're still enjoying ourselves. But now, let me ask you this question. Um, you got a chance to work with the Lions. Yes, sir. How did you get that call, man? <laughs> well, here we go again. We're in, uh, we're backstage doing uh, Don't Get Got Started. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see, the producer of that particular play happened to be Kim Fields' father. Wow. Um, oh, God, his name forgets me right now. Um, oh my God, what's the guy's name? At any rate, yeah. it's Kim it, it, right, that. Yeah. He produced uh, "Don't Get Guys Started." So in that production, there was uh, there was uh, Carvin Winans and Ronald Winans oh. that were involved in the production, along with uh, Vanessa Bell Armstrong. So with those names, we we did the play and we did we we did the work we we're supposed to do. And um, the guys, what they did was they picked out four or five of us. We were with Brent Jones and friends. <laughs> so they picked out four or five people and said, yeah. look, we want y'all to work with us. And uh, wow. so we went, in, we went in studio with, with the Winans about, about two weeks after production was over for the yeah. play. And uh, one thing led to another. Man, that's mm -hmm. cool. 
And then you got a chance to work with a couple of other artists. Uh, um, uh, you, you, did you work with the OJs at one time? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. How did you get that one? Through, through, um, we were working, we were working with uh, one of the producers, uh, one of the producers of the of the uh, play. Uh, picked us up for to do the uh, NBC sitcom Amen with Sherman Hemsley. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were involved with that after uh, after working with the Winans for, Winans for a minute, mm -hmm. and we went and did the uh, we went and did the pilot. So we you know the um, the opening music. Yeah. Shine down your light from heaven, Lord. Yeah. Shine on me. <laughs> yeah, right. Wonder, wonderful, uh, wonderful piece of music. Uh, that was produced by uh, a guy named Harold Johnson. Okay. Did Andre Cross work on that one too? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Andre, Andre was on that. Was part of his choir actually. Yeah. So you had you had a couple of Winans, you had Andre Crouch, you had Brent Jones and his friends. Okay. So I mean, I'm talking well, about yeah, 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 yeah I'm yeah, talking okay. about yeah, those were musicians, right? Buddy. So yeah, we had a, we had a good time doing that. Out of that, the girl that was the um, that was in charge of uh, uh, bringing that together, mm -hmm. she also worked with the OJs. So uh -huh. she called in Eddie and uh, Eddie and Walter. Yeah. To do something on on set. And Eddie, me and Eddie hit it off. When he heard, he, we were doing something. We're, Brent sits, likes to sit on the piano and play right. and was messing around. So Eddie heard what we were doing. So Eddie Eddie called on Brent and I to come and put put, put a few people together. And we did Emotionally Yours, the, the video with, uh, yeah. with the wine, with the uh, OJs brother. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And that's uh, cool. That, from that, things just kept building, kept building, kept building and yeah. Yeah, you know, it never ceases to amaze me how God puts uh, a certain anointing on people. And we, we, we have no reason to, to be jealous or envy. Right. We should appreciate the gifts that God gives the people. Exactly. Because when you do that, I mean, you know, I, I hate to say it like this, I don't want to sound morbid, but there will never be another you. Right, right, right. So if we don't appreciate what you're doing, mm -hmm. you know, and we're envious of it. Mm -hmm. Once you go, man, that, that's it. It ain't no more Bible stuff. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So, so I always thank God for people like yourself and yeah. different people around. Me. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I know we've ran into some musicians. I, I'm not gonna. This is my good podcast, so we ain't gonna <laughs> land blast anybody. Right. But there are some musicians that can rub you kind of wrong, or uh, Absolutely. sort of like what a um, uh, what Bishop said. Uh, he said your gift will get you in. Mm -hmm. But it's your character that keeps you. That part, yeah. Talk a little bit about that, because I know we've, you know, and we're not going to land blast anybody, but just right, talk right, a little right. bit about, you know. No, well, you how know, that works. you do have people in the business and in the, in the industry that will rub you the wrong way. <laughs> right. um, and I used to, uh, I used to be kind of floored by coffee, y'all. <laughs> right. That's all it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I used to be, I used to be floored by different people that come out and go, well. I'm the, uh, this is going to be the next Luther Vandross, so this is going to be the next <laughs> Stevie Wonder, you know, right. and the way, the way I live my life, yeah. you know, God bless Stevie with what he blessed Stevie man, with, yeah. and that's Stevie's gift. And I love him too, man. It don't oh. make no, it don't make no sense for me to sit up here and say, I want to be the next Stevie Wonder because that's not possible. Right. The oh, fact right. of the matter is what I had to teach myself and what I had to pray for God to do for me, and he did it. He allowed me to concentrate on being the best Michael Starr that I could be. Exactly. And believe me, now I've had people come to me after doing shows. I did a show with Terrence out in uh, out in Hollywood. Yeah. Terrence Thomas, a wonderful, wonderful uh, right. keyboard player, yeah. uh, bass guitar player, lead guitar player, uh, man, hell of a guy. Yeah. Anyway, he took me to a lot of places where I thought I'd never go. Um, right. But we were doing we were doing a gig one night and I did a cover of um Superstar. Okay. So after the gig, man, this guy comes to me and he goes, Man, I'm a I'm a producer and I'm doing this and I'm doing that and I was listening to what you were doing and he said, Man, the rendition of Superstar that you did tonight, he said, You blew it out of the water <laughs> and he said, You're the next Luther Vandross and I had to stop him. <laughs> I said, no, 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 no. Right. What you're not gonna right. do, what you're not gonna right. do is put me there yeah. because you know, respect. 
Luther has my total respect. Yeah. There will never be another Luther Vandross. Right. I said, just understand that I did. I I put on that song what Michael Starr felt. Exactly. Yeah. And I I appreciate what you yeah. said. Yeah. But what I want you what I want you to remember is that that was Michael Starr's cover of a Luther Vandross tune. Right. If you enjoyed it, say I enjoyed it. Yeah. Don't tell me I'm yeah. gonna be the next Luther, because yeah. who knows? I mean, I I may I may surpass what Luther did. Right, right, as far you as know. financially or, or the audience. Yeah. And, and, but, and you know what? And there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. People have to understand that because, well, of course, you've been knowing me for a while, Mike, and you know how much I love the Joe Sample and, yes. you know, the yes. George Duke. I mean, I do what I can to emulate them, but I can't be them. Exactly. You exactly. know, yeah. uh, I got a chance to meet um, um, Mr. Myron McKinley, the, 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 the um, He's the MD for Earth, Wind, and Fire. Now. Okay, okay. And I mean, the guy's phenomenal, cool person. Yeah. You know, I love people like that. Mm -hmm. But you know what you were saying, Stevie Wonder. Mm -hmm. Man, and you know how much I love Stevie. Absolutely. I, I, I try to play every song. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. But the thing is, though, I have to be me, and that's why I really appreciate what God has blessed us all with. Mm -hmm. And that's why I mentioned this about appreciating the gift, and I can see that you you've done that. Yeah. work with the wine is in different because you did work with stevie wonder right absolutely, absolutely yeah tell me about that oh god i forgot what that was what that was about but uh we did first family that's what it was yeah i worked with stevie at first family okay yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's cool um never really got to go one-on-one -on -one with him which i really would have loved but right. you know i mean just being involved yeah. was enough for me yeah um the name came back to me Kim Phil's father, Barry Hankerson. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> He's a okay. Pretty, pretty, pretty well known. Yeah. Producer. Well known. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you have uh, wrote a. Uh, I, I'm about to say album. Lord Jesus, I, I know we don't do album. C C C D. Uh -huh. Well, okay, we do CDs. Now. No, we do what, MP3s now. Now we do MP3s. Yeah. yeah okay. Whatever. CDs but, are absolute. But, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you you did. I'm gonna go old school. You did an album now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about that writing process. Oh my God. Um, Wow. Some people say, you know, I can write a song and, and such and such. And some people say, well, it takes a few months. Some people say, well, oh, I, no, we what, put the what, project. Is, what is your concept of it? Oh, my God. We put that project out. Uh, it might have been, I'm pretty sure it was right around three to four months. Okay. We put that project out. And I mean, that, that means from, from writing to production to recording to, uh, I went to, um, I went to the online process to, right, to distribute okay. it. So, um, yeah, great piece of work. Yeah. Um, title track on that was, um, oh my God. What was the title track to the first album? Um, I want to say Walk in Church. Um, had to be Eric, uh, a, a good friend of mine. Uh, Eric from Central. Yeah. Wrote uh, wrote Walking Church for me. Um, okay. Put it together and we just we have had fun with it. But then yeah. I had Theo Gearing do a song on the album. Okay. Um, I did three covers, three gospel covers. Then I had um, Terrence Terrence Thomas and Tamron Walker do yeah. a, do a okay. tune do a tune for me. Yeah. Greg Walker wrote a song for me on that particular album. Yeah. So yeah, um, all right, that's yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like I say though, uh, uh, I'm just excited because you know we go a long ways and we got some things coming up. Is there anybody else you, you want to speak of? Because I know you work with a lot of people. Now I don't <coughs> look. We're not here to name drop or anything like that. Right. But but we're talking about how God has blessed us to open up. You know, He opened up doors for us Absolutely. to work with different people. Absolutely. And it's just a life experience. That's all. Absolutely. So you know. I think when sometimes people do name dropping, you, you can kind of tell that they're trying to do that. Yes, yes. But yes. we're we're just talking about, you know, the good Lord is making a way, and you work with different people because you work uh, with Charlie Wilson too, right? Charlie Wilson. That was that was th through working with. Uh, um, I, that was we were in the studio one night with uh, had to be. We're in, uh, uh, what Melrose and Gower. Okay. The studio right at Melrose and yeah. and I believe we were doing something with uh, with the Gap Band at the time. Yeah. Um, again, through working with the winers, we, we got put in a position to do that yeah. through working yeah. with the winers. Cat named Charles Smith <clears throat> was uh, 
was was uh, the executive producer for um, for the OJ's at not the OJ's the uh, Gap Band at the time. Okay. So through working with them, uh, great band. They had yeah. an absolutely great band. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Those 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 guys were special. So we did that. <clears throat> came out of there, <clears throat> and got a chance to do a little little work with uh, Karen White and Chucky Booker through uh, working yeah, with yeah, Terrence. Uh, Chucky's cold. Absolutely. Goodness, absolutely. Man, I was, uh, look. I hope you follow this podcast, Chucky, but this, we're going to post this up. Brother, you're a bad brother. I never met you personally, but I know a friend of mine who, who works with you, boy Russ. Anyway, bro, I love to meet you, man. That boy is cold. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Um, he, uh, he, Chucky, and, Chucky and Terrence were in, in a group together. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's thunder and lightning, right? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so. Uh, you know that that was that was another uh, another uh, connection that I had yeah. that I put, had. Um, then of course uh, the uh, my, my 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 number one dude, man, Greg Walker. Yeah. Yeah. Does the lead vocal on Black Magic Woman. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Absolutely. Oh yeah. my goodness, that's cool. Yeah. Now look, I'm gonna segue into this because I know we. I don't want to take up all your time, and I know you know my podcast uses about 30 minutes, mm -hmm. but you got some interesting things coming up really soon um tell me what you're working on right now well um at this point just uh doing i'm really kind of trying to make my way out of doing uh a regular thing with the with the uh, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah man <laughs> trying to yeah. try to get out of yeah. I, I didn't want to say it that way yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. i'm trying to get out of corporate america right, and, yeah. and, and get get into being self-employed yeah. to be honest with yeah. you so yeah um looking forward to doing some things with this uh with this cat i grew up with man he's awesome musician always wanted to work with him one-on-one -on -one to do some things because i know he, he got talent man cat named Dan, daniel nelson i don't know if you know <laughs> but yeah, yeah we're gonna, we, and we're gonna hook up and do some things man because it's it's um like i said man the gift that god has blessed us with uh and i'm not ashamed to say it you know mm -hmm. I, I want the whole world to hear what we got going there you but go. if he blesses the forty three thousand years i'm grateful yeah yeah. So yeah, we we gonna we gonna put some stuff together. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. And I, I would say we gonna put some on wax, but they don't use wax anymore. There well, you go. You know, uh -huh. We gonna we gonna do it. We gonna we gonna make some yeah, music. We, yeah, we gonna make some music. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I find it interesting, man, because uh, um, uh, you know, I, I've run across the, some great people in my life, mm -hmm. and uh, we've hooked up with some great people, and the thing is, always comes a blessing to come back full circle right right to work something out with people that you love and you respect exactly and your brother that i love and respect yes sir because yes, uh sir. i mean we've done some things at that carson civic center oh yeah you know oh yeah i yeah. mean man and at that time uh you know we were younger but you know we still packed it out we had a thousand people this just <laughs> absolutely <laughs> I mean, that's exciting to but us but like you said, man, it, go, it all it all goes back it, full circle. It all goes back to what we did, man. We always we always loved the Lord, yeah. number one. Yes. We always respected our parents, number two. Right. Um, we always gave the service to our church. Wherever yes. wherever we were involved yes. with that church, we gave service there. Yeah. So what happens is God makes room for your gift. Yeah. And I had to remind myself constantly to be patient. Right. Just be patient. Right. I'm going, okay, God, well, you know, I've been waiting since 1970-some-odd, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah. You said you're just going to bless me financially through my gift. And, yeah. you know, yes, he's taken me places. I've been places. Right. I've done things. I've been with others. But when you look, when you go to my home and you go to, let's just say, Gerald Levert's home. Right. You know, yeah. <laughs> um, it's, yeah. it's day and night. Right, right. So I'm going, okay, God, you blessed him. Where, where's mine? But what I found out. Uh, and Marvin Wine has told me this. He said, when you see someone else getting blessed, you don't ask God, uh, I, I thought I would have had mine by now. Or, you, you know, you probably, what, you, what right. you're supposed to be, what you're supposed to do in that, in that instance is start praising them because I know mine is coming. Yeah. If he did it for them, I know right. mine is coming. Right. So yeah. that, that's, that, that's what separates us yeah. from the, yeah. from your average, uh, right. your average artist out there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and 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 the good Lord has blessed us with some a, a good lives. Thus absolutely, far. absolutely. Um, let me ask you this, and, and then, then we'll we'll close it out. Um, what advice 
could you give to young musicians? Because I, I noticed this. I'm grateful for the YouTube. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for all that TikTok and all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, so me and social media and, and you know, communication. Mm -hmm. um, but some people don't realize the struggle and I'm grateful that it is a better way. Mm -hmm. Well, what advice can you give to some young musicians or even older musicians? Because sometimes they want to be here per se, right? But they're not grateful for for, for the things that's happening. Because you know the reality is, I I play almost every weekend. There you go. There you I'm go. I'm playing almost every weekend. That's my and thing. And both bands are paying me pretty well. That's my thing. Um, my 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 biggest piece of advice to anyone, man, anyone. Uh, especially in this industry. Number one, you gotta have patience. You gotta uh. be patient. You gotta <laughs> be patient, man, because you can't take step number one and then be ready ready for step fifty five. <laughs> step one. Right, right, yeah. It doesn't work that way, yeah. man. You gotta you gotta put your work in. Yeah. Um be true to your craft. Be the best you you can be. You know, yeah. I, I understand emulating. I, I get that. Right. But be the best you you can be. Um I heard Les Brown say it. Uh Cause I'm a stickler for that, man. Yeah. I, I listen to motivational speeches right. day in and day out because I gotta yeah. keep. You gotta keep yourself motivated. Right. You know, of course, you get in your scripture and you pray. Yeah. But then you want you want to you want to bombard your mind with positive, right. positive thoughts, positive affirmations on a daily yeah. basis. Yeah. So I heard Les Brown say it. Uh, that was that was over 15, 20 years ago, but it sticks with me. He says, "What you what if if you're involved in doing anything?" He said he would he would expect for you to read at least one book a month yeah read what involve yourself under know, right. know what's going on in your industry know what's yeah. going on and what you're what you want to be involved with yeah. learn it learn it do the best you can uh and that that's one of the main things read read, read books um uh, watch videos you know yeah you know hone your craft yeah and that that's what that's what i tell anybody out there hone your craft that you know? that's that's good advice because i i've i've as a matter of fact, I read Les Brown's latest book. Uh, I guess it's the latest book, Stay Hungry. You got to be hungry. Man. You got to be hungry. That's yeah. that's inspiration. Oh, absolutely. You know, absolutely. I started this podcast. Uh, I'll make it short, but I started this podcast about two years ago, right before, well, COVID was just really, you know, picking up speed for a better life of words. Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, and I've been wanting to do a podcast before COVID. Okay. Okay. But this kind of forced me. Like, okay, now what can I do? Mm -hmm. Everything's starting to shut down. Mm -hmm. What can I do? Yeah, let me stay busy. Yeah. And seriously, it's like, you know what? You said you've been wanting to do this, but I didn't know how to even approach it. Because mm -hmm. it's like, well, you know, what's the word? How, how, like, man, I said, yeah, I'm just going to step out and start doing this. Because yeah. yeah. I got a bunch of friends that's in the entertainment business mm -hmm. and, and also just know the background of business and music. Right. Right. Let me talk to these guys and let the world know what they're thinking. Absolutely. And that's why I appreciate you, man, because I can't be you, mm -hmm. but the things that you've done and just spoken on this podcast, man, mm -hmm. will hopefully it will enlighten a lot of people. Absolutely. By even working with different people, mm -hmm. because you know, working with the Gap Band, their process is different from the old Jays. Yes. But you're able to adjust yourself mm -hmm. to make that thing work. <clears throat> absolutely absolutely you know, so man, I, I appreciate you Mike for, for just giving that advice staying patient yes you yes. know mm -hmm. honing your craft mm -hmm. reading some books especially something that you, man yes. that's that's yes. those are three powerful things that uh that that that's just sustain us absolutely yeah absolutely, absolutely. Mike I want to thank you man for just yes, coming sir. on my show yes sir I appreciate yes, sir. it and we will be working together real soon man oh yeah blessings yes. to you bro All right now